Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Usual, and today I want to talk about whether or not it's going to be worth it to ditch the store-bought stevia that I have in the house for the garden stevia that I grew last year. I've got a big jar of stevia right here. We're going to go ahead and do a taste test. I'm going to compare the sweetness between two different cups of coffee. I'm going to talk about uh, the difficulty or how easy it was for me to grow it and how much I'm really going to need if I want to replace the artificial for the more natural alternative. So stick around and check it out and welcome to my usual homestead. All right, guys, so this right here is the culmination of three different plants of stevia over the course of last year. Now, as you can see, we've got stems, we've got seeds, not seeds, but we have seed pods right here. We've got seed pods, we've got stems, we've got leaves. I've got the whole, the whole plant is in here except for the roots. I went ahead and I cut it off, I cut it off at, the, um, at the base, right at the ground level. I would dry them out. Um, now you're gonna. We have some brown leaves. We have some green leaves. That's gonna happen with a natural product, so I'm not too worried about it. But each one of these leaves is super sweet. Now stevia is about two to three hundred times sweeter than sugar. Uh, but I've been cut. I cut sugar out myself over the course of the last six months, and so I grew this last year because I knew I was gonna do that this year. So I went ahead and I I've been saving this. I have chewed on a leaf or two, and I think it's gonna be great for coffee. Now, you can do a lot of things with stevia. You can go ahead and grind it up, make it into a powder. You can go ahead and you can add it to vodka and make a tincture out of it. You can go ahead and you can, you can probably make an oil out of it. I don't know why you would make a stevia oil unless you're baking with it, but, um, but, but powders and, and tinctures are probably gonna be your best bet. I do have a bottle of, um, of Sweet Drops Stevia Clear here that I, I bought, but this stuff is really, really super bitter. I don't care for this. Now this is, and you can't see it on the bottle, but at the bottom it says Purified Water Organic Stevia Leaf Extract and Natural Flavor. So this is pure stevia. Now this over here is not pure stevia. This right here has erythritol as the main ingredient, as you can see. I don't know if you can read that. Actually, I think it's blurred out, but it's got erythritol dextrose with a maltodextrin uh, uh rabana which is stevia leaf extract and natural flavors this is not true stevia this is false advertising but uh i bet that's what i use in the house and that's about six dollars a jar now each one of these plants was six dollars as well so that's eighteen dollars worth of stevia plant right here and the question is can i get three jars of that out of this um i i think i can i really do because if I, because this says it has 80 servings, 80 servings. So um, I, if I can get 240 servings out of this, and I really think it only is gonna take like two or three leaves to sweeten up a, a cup of coffee. What they're saying a serving is over here is, is there's 80 of those for a cup of coffee, basically. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make some, some French drip coffee, and we're gonna, or fr yeah, French press, not French drip, French press coffee. And we're using my favorite coffee, Death Wish Coffee. If you guys know Death Wish, you guys know me. If you've been on my over my gaming channel, my usual me daily games, you know that I like Death Wish Coffee. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make a little bit of a French press Death Wish here. That should be good enough. I don't need that much. I've already got the water boiling. And then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to compare. I'm going to compare the flavors myself as to whether or not a couple of leaves of stevia are going to be enough to sweeten my coffee. And here we go. Let's go ahead and just pour that water right in there. Like so, that's good enough. And I like my coffee about 150, between 140 and 158 degrees. So that's where I, that's what I'm doing right now. We're going to press that right through there. And then when she's done, I'm going to do the side-by-side -side test. All right, there we go. So that's good. All right, so let me put this off to the side for a second. Let it finish steeping here. And then I've got uh, two jars here. I've got two pint jars. Let me go ahead and. 
move that down a little bit. So I've got two pint jars right here. What I'm going to do is we're going to take, I'm going to take a half of it. I'm going to take a, a probably, I'm going to take a teaspoon. I'm going to take a teaspoon of this stevia erythritol mix, put it in there. And then I'm going to take, that's a lot for that pint. That's a lot for that pint. I really, I really think it's too much, but that's no, whatever. And then I'm going to take uh, a handful of these leaves right here. I've got this, let's see, I could probably crush these up, but I think I'm just going to stuff this. There's two. I don't think I need a ton in this. And you can use, you know what, you, if you don't have one of these little guys right here for tea or whatever, this infuser, you can always use a little tea ball. It would be the same thing. And I, however many times you could use this would depend on how long, how sweet you wanted your coffee or your tea or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and just slip these leaves in here like this. I'm going to use about four leaves right here. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to leave it right here in this jar. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to use coffee right here. And I'm going to just pour it right over the infuser. I can already tell you this coffee is weaker than I like, but it's not about the strength of the coffee. It's about the strength of the stevia at the moment. So that's what I'm going for. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to fill it all the way to the top. Oh, I should have enough for Bo. That's good for that. If I don't, we'll add some more water maybe, huh? I might have just exactly what I need. Okay, so that's good. So that's those two right there. That is a lot weaker coffee than what I like. That looks like strong tea to me. All right, so we're going to give this a little, we're going to give this a little stir. I'm going to give this a little stir. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in about two or three minutes. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to test the sweetness of this one versus the sweetness of this one. And we're going to see, you know, what it tastes like. All right, guys, I went ahead and let it sit for about four or five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and get, take a taste right quick. This is the one where this is the coffee that we had the powder in it, the store-bought Stevia Erythritol mix. So, okay, it's not as strong as I thought it was going to be, so it's about right. For about an eight-ounce eight cup, one teaspoon is about right for me. That's my, my taste, so it's sweet enough. I might add a little more. But, uh, but that's okay. That's all right. Really, the, the taste, the proof is in the pudding here, so to speak. This is the infuser that had my stevia leaves in there, about three or four leaves in there. And I, we just left it in there. And you can probably take this out and let it sit on a plate to drain. And you could probably use it two or three times, I would imagine, if this is going to be sweet enough for me. Let me go ahead and take a taste. Let me see. Okay, it's got a different flavor, of course. Erythritol is going to be, a, a, and uh, along with stevia, is going to have a different flavor. It's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be. Uh, it, it, I can taste the, the sweetness on the back of my throat versus the on my tongue. Versus, whereas uh, with this other one, I can taste it on my tongue, and and it tastes more like sugar. This is going to take a little bit more getting used to. I can tell. Um, and then again, I didn't stir it this whole five minutes either. Let's go ahead and stir this up a little bit more here. Let's see if we can get a little bit more, a little bit more sweetness out of it. Mm -hmm. There's a little more sweetness in there. It's still, you know, it's still more black coffee than, than sweet. So it's not as powerful as the stevia. So I would suggest if you're going to go from sugar to stevia, to the grown stevia, I would do a step down process. That's what I would do. This is not as strong, uh, but I then again, I only used uh, three or four leaves. I didn't grind it up. So if I ground it up, I imagine it would release its, its uh, crystals a lot faster. I would imagine its crystalline structure would be a lot more broken down at that point, but I wanted to leave my, my leaves as, as whole and as pure as possible for as long as possible to keep their shelf life um, around as long as it, I can keep it. So, and the more you break down something, the more you process it when it's a natural product, the faster it's going to lose its potency. So I wanted to go ahead and leave it. And I thought I'd go ahead and try the leaves today rather than the powdered product. And we're going to go ahead and we'll, you, we'll do the powdered product with something else in the future. You could, if you wanted to go ahead and you wanted to make it um, the strength you wanted, what I would suggest is to take your leaves and put them in water for a longer period of time before you make your product, whether it be coffee or tea or what have you. 
Um, you could, like I said, you could use uh, like vodka to make a tincture and then boil off the vodka and then you'd have just a pure stevia tincture. But, you know, I, I'm not messing with alcohol these days. So, uh, so I won't be doing that. I won't be doing that. I'm going to figure out a way to make like a sweet water and then make my coffee from that is what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'll make a gallon of sweet water with as many leaves as it takes and to the sweetness that I like. And then I'll use that to make my coffee and make my tea. And then I'll just, it's, there's, it's not, it won't be sticky like sugar. So it shouldn't affect my machines any, like I don't use a regular coffee pot. I use drip. So I would be just putting it right through the filter um, from the, the sweet water uh, out of the electric kettle into the filter to filter my, um, to filter through with the sweet water. So it shouldn't make a difference. It should be fine. Uh, I should be able to get the, 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 the strength that I need. Question is, is it economically the same? Like this, this jar right here is three plants and I used four leaves out of here. I probably have a thousand leaves in here, plus the stems, plus the flower heads. Um, I would say, I, yes, I would say this is probably going to be about the same cost wise as three of those jars of st this, this erythritol store-bought garbage. I, I call it garbage because it's processed heavily, heavily, heavily. Is it consistent? Yes. Is it, uh, are you going to get the same thing every single time? Sure. If you grow your own stevia, how hard is it to grow stevia? It's not hard at all. It is really difficult to get stevia to grow from a seed. But if you go to your nursery and you get stevia and you order stevia and you plant it in like a house plant, even in your windowsill, you're going to have really good results. I actually took cuttings and put them in, uh, and, I, and I did a little Kratky style water growth uh, experiment where I put them in the water and put a little root toner in it and then it grew roots like right away and I was able to keep them alive most of the winter and right at, during the spring it died they all, all those plants died off then I put them outside I, th I was thinking they might grow no they're dead so uh, it's really a one-year plant it's an annual and it's not meant to to go year after year but I, I, I can see where someone could clone their plants and continue that process over and over again without having to buy new. And if you can do that, if you could successfully do that, then you would have a, a sweetener in your home that would be a perpetual sweetener that you wouldn't have to go out and, and go to the store and buy it. So I would rather go natural than I would process. That's the, that's the TLDR of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and when I'm done with uh, the stevia I've got in the house here with this, we're gonna go straight with this because I've already planted three new plants that are going to be growing out throughout the rest of this year. So this should carry me through the summer. And at the end of the summer, when I harvest, I'll show you how much I've got left. And uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to be using... Now, in baking, though, I probably will continue to use stevia powder because, like I said, it is more consistent and it is a powder and it's easily... I mean, I'm not going to be putting plant material in my bread. It just doesn't make sense. Although I could make sweet water and mix it in with my flour for my bread. If I wanted to make a sweet bread, like a banana bread or a, or a, or a, a plum bread or something like that, you know, I might do that. We might experiment with that in the future. So if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments because I could, if I can learn from you, that'd be great. And maybe one day somebody can learn from me. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today's uh, video. I will be back next Sunday. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications if I've earned your subscription. As I always say, I am my usual me, you be your usual you, and we'll see you in the next episode of My Usual Homestead. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.